Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome back to the channel. So today I want to cover something very general but also very important, aim, and specifically aiming in first person shooters on PC. So I'm going to start by totally contradicting the point of this video. People really overestimate the importance of aim. Don't get me wrong, it is important but there are other skills that get overlooked by some people because they're so focused on aiming. If esports were ever taught in schools, you'd probably learn about the first person shooter fundamentals or something like that. There are a set of skills that transfer between games and they are, well, fundamental to being a good player. Those things are aim, movement, positioning and game sense. So yes, aim is definitely right up there as one of the most important skills, but it's pretty common for people to focus so hard on clicking heads that they stand out in the open, they move predictably and play too aggressively or passively when they shouldn't be. In that situation, your aim could be well above average, but you'll still lose spectacularly because you were standing in a bad spot and making yourself an easy target. Have you ever watched pro players and seen the difference in their accuracy between pub stomping on Twitch and playing against other pros in real matches. Their aim stays the same. They don't just get worse because they're playing against other good players, but their accuracy drops. Why? Because pro players have great movement as well. A good player can dodge shots just as well as they can make them, so do not neglect the other fundamentals. But with that being said, you need to have at least some level of aiming competence. You could have great hard to predict movement and dodge a load of shots, you could be standing in a great spot, and you could perfectly predict when and where someone might come around a corner, but if you can't move your crosshair to that opponent's head, it's all for nothing. So let's learn how to aim. I'm going to split this into a few different parts, so first let's quickly start with gear and sensitivity. I'd actually like to skim over this somewhat because it's another area that people focus too much on. Having said that, if someone says having a good mouse doesn't matter, they're talking crap. Of course it matters. But likewise, if some razor marketer tells you that it's the difference between being thoroughly mediocre and pro or something to that effect, that's also a load of rubbish. Having a comfortable and predictable mouse is important, but it really depends on your techniques and requirements. Mouse recommendations are beyond the scope of this video, but if you're in the market for a new mouse, go check out Rocket Jump Ninja. I'll leave a link down below. The other thing to talk about briefly is sensitivity. This definitely matters, but there's a huge element of preference here. More often than not, people have their sensitivity too high rather than too low. A suitable sensitivity depends on the game you're playing, and as Apex Legends is kind of the go-to FPS for a lot of people right now, I'll just use that as an example. If you have a mouse set to 800 DPI, you should be aiming to have your sensitivity between 1 and 3 in-game. If you use 400 DPI, double those values, and if you use 1600, then halve it. There are outliers who have slightly higher or lower sensitivities, but the vast, vast, vast majority of decent players sit somewhere in that range. To cut a long story short, if your sensitivity is too high, small movements such as shivering or even slight adrenaline shakes can throw your aim off a lot. It's also easier to build muscle memory for a larger movement than a smaller one. Essentially, the lower your sensitivity is, the more consistent your aim will be day to day. But what some people don't talk about, because it's a much rarer issue, is overly low sensitivity. If your sensitivity is too low, it can lead to lazy aim. For example, it might take so much effort to check a 90 degree angle that you might just stop doing it. This is a really rare problem to have though, but if you're a CSGO player switching to, well, pretty much any other FPS, you might want to look at raising your sensitivity a bit. But for pretty much everyone else, it's unlikely that your sensitivity will be too low. And with gear and sensitivity out of the way, let's get on with the actual aim training, starting with building muscle memory. This is a term you might hear getting thrown around a lot, but so many people build muscle memory through dumb luck. They just grind games and think that builds muscle memory. To be fair, it does to an extent, but it's also quite likely that you'll pick up a bunch of bad habits by doing it that way. Have you ever seen those people who make mouse movements like a pro? Like they might use flick shots and advanced techniques and that sort of thing, but when you actually watch them, it's actually kind of random whether or not they actually come close to hitting anything. Yeah, those people are trying to build muscle memory through dumb luck, and they're just watching the pros and what they do, and they're just trying to emulate it. Yeah, don't do that. If you're sitting there wondering what muscle memory actually is, in the context of gaming, it's stuff like how far you have to move your mouse to go from where your crosshair currently is 
to where your opponent is. It also ties into hand-eye coordination, the ability to see something on screen and for your arm and wrist to move in a way that gets you the result you want. If you're new to PC gaming or if you're changing your sensitivity, it's important to build muscle memory. I mentioned that you shouldn't neglect your movement positioning and game sense. Well, if you build good muscle memory, your aim will mostly just happen by itself, leaving you with much more time to think about everything else. This is basically what you're <laughs> aiming for. There are many ways to train your muscle memory, like Anabots in Overwatch or one of the many aim training maps in CSGO, but the problem with a lot of these methods is they mostly train your aim on a horizontal plane. In CSGO, that's mostly okay because the game doesn't have a huge amount of verticality, but for Overwatch, Fortnite, Apex Legends and many other more recent shooters, there are a lot of fast moving and vertical elements to the game. So for that reason, I'd highly recommend checking out some aim training software like Aim Hero or or another one that I just recently discovered, AimLab. And I'm actually going to focus on AimLab because one, it's free on Steam right now, and two, it has way more game-specific options than the alternatives. For example, you can match your sensitivity and FOV perfectly to what you use in Apex Legends, Rainbow Six Siege, Fortnite, and others. Now, how you use the software is the important part. If you're just going to take the dumb luck approach, you might as well just forget about it. But if you really want to improve, what you really need to be doing is approaching it as a muscle memory exercise. And to do that, you need to, perhaps counterintuitively, aim as slowly as possible. Let's explain. If you're aiming as fast as possible, you might get better scores off the bat, but all you're doing is reinforcing bad habits that you might have. What we're aiming for here is better accuracy and confidence in your movements. As long as you have mouse acceleration off, which you should by the way, whether you aim quickly or slowly, the distance you need to move the mouse to get from A to B remains the same. So to start with, I want you to basically just aim like a bot. As slowly as you need to, drag the mouse from one target to another with the main objective being not over or under shooting the next target. You want to stop the mouse dead on the target and then shoot. For this exercise, I'm using the spider shot mode set to precision. And honestly, that's all you need to do. As slowly as you need to, just go from one target to the next target to the next target. Don't worry about speed. Don't worry about the score you get at the end. Just try not to move the mouse past the target or stop short. You want to get to the point where you see a target and you can confidently move your crosshair to the target and stop dead on. And once you understand the exercise, I'd also like you to completely tune out. Try not to think at all about what you're doing. There are two reasons for this. One, it helps you keep a bit calmer and allows you to train for longer without getting stressed out. And if you feel at all stressed when you're doing this, you're doing it wrong. Just chill out and don't worry if you suck at first. And the second reason is, in a real game, you'll have a lot more to think about than just aiming. So you really don't want to train yourself to tunnel vision on aiming. Aiming should just happen automatically. And by building solid muscle memory, aiming on autopilot will become easier and easier. And the great thing with this exercise is, as your muscle memory improves, you'll naturally start to aim faster. And the funny thing is, you won't even feel like you're going faster. And the great thing about that is, even if it takes a while, when you do start aiming faster, you won't have any bad habits like over or under aiming. There are quite a lot of other exercises in Aim Lab. Some of them are clearly aimed at Overwatch players. You've basically got a Genji mode, a Pharah mode, and a Tracer mode. And you can also change your weapons and stuff like that. Those features are all pretty cool, but honestly, I would just stick to the more generic exercises. Personally, I find the spider shot and micro shot to be the most useful. Micro shot is actually a really good one to try because while spider shot is useful for learning larger movements, more often than not, if your game sense is decent, you probably know roughly where an enemy might come out based on map knowledge, sound cues, and all that sort of stuff. So chances are your crosshair will already be pretty close to where they pop out. And for that reason, training small flicks is really useful. So that's how you train muscle memory, but what are some other things you can work on? Let's take a look at aiming techniques. So what we've been working on so far is basically drag and flick shooting, which honestly, while the execution is slightly different, they're basically the same thing, just at different speeds. And a huge amount of aiming will be done using these techniques, particularly with semi-automatic weapons. However, with fully automatic and beam weapons, you'll also want to learn a little bit about tracking. The weird thing with tracking is the actual technique is basically the same as drag aiming, but the execution is almost entirely prediction. 
When you track an enemy smoothly, you're actually predicting their movement, not reacting to it. Otherwise, you'd constantly be behind where they actually are. So if your flick aim is good, but your tracking is bad, chances are it's not an aim issue, it's a prediction issue. And the only way you're gonna improve that is to actually think less about your aim and more about what movement your opponent might make next. There is a workaround, however. So let's quickly take a look at a relatively new technique called micro flicking. This is a technique that was popularized by a few Korean Overwatch players. It's a technique that takes all the prediction work out of tracking someone, and it's really quite simple. Basically, instead of smoothly tracking someone, you make a series of small corrections as your opponent moves. Depending on the game and the weapon you're using, it's often accompanied by tap shooting too. So instead of just holding left click and emptying your clip as fast as possible, you shoot in bursts every time you make those tiny corrections. This is actually a very useful technique for Apex Legends where time to kill is long and damage per clip is relatively small. Even though it might take longer to empty your clip, by using this technique your accuracy will most likely be higher, so your chances of one clipping someone can improve a lot by micro flicking. Smooth tracking in a perfect world looks a lot nicer, and it can be more effective. But the more skilled your opponents, the harder they'll be to track. So micro flicking can be a really useful technique to learn. One other thing to quickly mention is projectile aim. This applies to a bunch of Overwatch characters and a ton of games only have projectile weapons, including Apex Legends and Fortnite. Your actual mechanical aim techniques remain the same whether you're using projectiles or hitscan weapons, but with projectiles, there's a focus on movement prediction. You have to predict where your enemy will be by the time your projectile reaches them. Again, the more you can aim subconsciously, the more time you have to make predictions. So forget about the mechanical aspect of aiming and focus on predicting movement. So we focused a lot on theory and exercises, but as soon as you jump into a real game with opponents who actively try to dodge your shots, all of this stuff seemingly goes out of the window. And in truth, yeah. It, it does. The reason you build muscle memory is so you don't have to think about it when you get into a game. And if all you do to improve your aim is exercises, you will become a pretty lousy player. So another important part of your training is deathmatch. Lots and lots of deathmatch. Honestly, there's just no substitute for it. You're against real players, you have little to no downtime when you die, and because of that, you can maximize your time working on your aim, movement, and everything else. The truth is, doing nothing but aiming exercises will turn you into a very shallow player. And as I said at the start of the video, if you can aim, but your movement is trash, you'll still lose a lot of duels because your opponent with subpar aim just has an easier time hitting you. This is why you need to play deathmatch. Not only does it cut out a lot of the downtime you have in a real game, it also gives you a score that is entirely tied to your shooting and movement performance. When you play deathmatch, all that stuff you worked on in your exercises should just go to the back of your mind. Keep doing your exercises, but as soon as you step into a real game, whether that's deathmatch or not, you should just forget about aiming. Don't just fall back into bad habits and aim randomly, of course, but you want to rely on all that training that you just branded into your subconscious. That way, the aim just happens by itself and you have more time to focus on predicting your opponents and dodging shots through good movement. If you're playing a battle royale game like Apex Legends or Fortnite, unfortunately, there isn't a deathmatch mode, at least not yet. So the next best thing you can do is just drop into a hot zone and play it like a deathmatch. Forget your stupid stats, they honestly don't mean anything. Just get in there and fight. Just like with deathmatch in other games, don't tunnel vision on shooting. Use cover, disengage to heal when you have to, but don't just try to survive, try to kill. It's the only way you're gonna get better. The amount of time you spend doing exercises and deathmatch depends on how much time you have to do it and what your ambitions are. But if you spend around 15 minutes doing exercises and 45 minutes doing deathmatch each day, I guarantee your aim will improve dramatically and surprisingly quickly too. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe for more gaming guides, news, and discussion. And don't forget to check out the links below to Patreon, Discord and Twitch. Until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.